Abstract algebra begins with the group. Groups are a general and powerful structure which encompass a wide range of objects. The integers, polynomials, matrices, modular arithmetic, functions, geometric transformations, and much more. After you've spent some time learning about groups, you're ready to move on to more specific structures, groups with extra features. Today we'll talk about additive groups which have a second operation, multiplication. We call these rings. Before we give the textbook definition of a ring, let's see some examples, which will motivate the idea. Consider these four sets, the integers, the real numbers, two by three matrices with real entries, and polynomials with complex coefficients. In arithmetic, you learn about four operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Let's see which operations are available for each of these sets. For the integer z, you can freely add, subtract, and multiply any two integers, and you'll get another whole number. But notice that you can't always divide. For example, 1 divided by 2 is 1 half, which is not an integer. It's a fraction. So for the integers, we only have three of the four operations from arithmetic. For the real numbers, you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide any two real numbers with the standard caveat that you cannot divide by 0. So the real numbers come equipped with all four operations. For the two by three matrices, you can add and subtract any two such matrices, but you cannot multiply or divide. This is because you can only multiply two matrices when the number of columns in the first matrix is the same as the number of rows in the second matrix. For example, you can multiply a three by five matrix by a five by two matrix because the width of the first is equal to the height of the second. And to divide one matrix A by another B, we have to multiply A by the inverse of B, and not every matrix is invertible. So this set only has two of the four operations. And finally, you can add, subtract, and multiply any two polynomials, and you'll get another polynomial. But if you divide one by another, you usually get a rational function, which is not a polynomial. The elements in the set of polynomials only have three of the four operations. These examples show that depending on the set, you'll have different operations from arithmetic available to you. And while in arithmetic you learn that there are four operations, in abstract algebra we think about things a little differently. Here, there are really only two operations, addition and multiplication. Let's see why. 2 minus 7 is the same as 2 plus negative 7. So here, subtraction is the same as adding a negative integer. Also, 3 minus negative 5 is the same as 3 plus 5, so in this example, subtracting negative 5 is the same as adding the opposite, which is 5. These examples show that subtraction is the same as adding an opposite element, but we use the word inverse instead of opposite. So in abstract algebra, subtraction is the same as addition with inverses. What's the benefit for this change in thinking? Why not continue to talk about addition and subtraction? One reason is that in abstract algebra, the elements may not be numbers. For example, the symmetric group on three elements is a group with six elements, where each element is a permutation. What does it mean to subtract the permutation 2, 3, 1? What is the negative of 2, 3, 1? It makes more sense to talk about combining one element with the inverse of another. Similarly, division is multiplication with inverses. For example, 3 divided by 5 is the same as 3 times 1 fifth. And 2 thirds divided by 4 sevenths can be written as 2 thirds times 7 fourths. We see for multiplication, inverse means reciprocal, while for addition, inverse means the opposite. To keep things clear, we'll often use the phrases additive inverses and multiplicative inverses. We already have a word for a set where you can add any two elements. Every element has an additive inverse, and you have the required rules from arithmetic. We call this a group. So in our four sets, all four are groups under addition. Better still, they are all commutative groups. But three of them also have multiplication, and one of them has multiplication with multiplicative inverses. We need names to describe sets with these additional features. When a commutative group under addition also has multiplication, we call it a ring. Let's see the official definition. A ring is a set of elements R with two operations, addition and multiplication. For both operations, the set is closed. This means if you add any two elements in R, you get another element in R. Similarly, if you multiply any two elements in R, you get a third element in R. 
For addition, the elements form an abelian group. For multiplication, there are fewer requirements. Like addition, multiplication has the associative property. But that's it. We don't require multiplication to be commutative. We also don't require elements to have multiplicative inverses. There's still some debate on whether or not a ring should have an identity element 1 for multiplication. Because of this, you'll often hear people talk about a ring with identity. This just means the ring has an element 1. And finally, these two operations are linked by the distributive properties. This is the official definition of a ring. There are additional names for rings depending on how close it comes to being a group under multiplication. For instance, while all rings are abelian under addition, they are not required to be commutative under multiplication. The 2x2 two two matrices with real entries are a great example of a ring that's not commutative. But if a ring is commutative, we call it a commutative ring. Also, rings are not required to have multiplicative inverses. If a ring does have inverses under multiplication, then we call it a division ring. This is a very descriptive name because the presence of multiplicative inverses allows us to define division. Division rings may or may not be commutative. A classic example of a non-commutative division ring is a quaternions, a quirky four-dimensional analog to the complex numbers. But if a division ring is commutative, then we call it a field.